but he still people are unhappy with his movement. So I can be that. So you uh, you say that uh, you encourage anybody who uh, disagrees with aspects of your philosophy to argue with you. No, we invite everyone. Please come and take to Krishna. So if one disagrees, why you come? But but don't you suggest that if somebody feels that uh, they can find fault in so your philosophy, they can explain what is that fault? Right. Well, then they then reply. But without fault, yeah. if they make some, uh, what is gone? A complaint? A uh, complaint. That, uh, that is what it is. Then, sir, um, what is your fault? You tell me. Then, uh, then sir, I want, to, I want to ask you about, well, it seems uh, this book is impracticable uh, without the kind of material I want. Uh, now, I, I don't want to adopt an uncompromising position at all, but I'm convinced that you misunderstand my motivations. I don't know how to persuade you that my motivations are good ones, um, and so therefore I'm in a corner, uh, in a cul-de-sac. Now, um, the material that I must have in this book uh, is sufficient to be able to persuade people that they're reading about something which is true. That means, for example, that I... Yeah, that works we have already done. To convince people that in the ninth moment, we have bought dozens of books and they're selling nicely. Practically, we are standing by the sales of our books and literature. How to convince people that this is a nice moment, we are ourselves publishing. You cannot uh, publish better book than what we have done. We know the internet. So I'm not seeking to persuade people that it's a nice movement. Yeah. I'm seeking to describe it. No, no, I want to describe, but you cannot describe better than us. It is not a fact. So back to Godhead. And the because other we, are not... we know our business. Therefore, we are describing our facts very nicely. You are outsider. That's right. Yeah, so you cannot place our, um, I mean to say, pros and cons so nicely. So I think we're talking about two different things. I think you... You, look- you, you wanted a little history of this moment, I mean. That you can, yeah. How the moment is going on, you can. But uh, we, we cannot spend a while of time in that way that I describe the biography of a person. Uh, in our book, uh, there is no biography of anyone. Uh, the biography is not uh, that you, we are interested in the philosophy. Well, I um, if you, if this the the philosophy began it is called began science. If you want to know what is the science at this moment, we can spare yeah, day and night to convince. But these are superficial. First of all, we we say. That uh, I'm not, we are not this body. So why we should be interested with the history of this body? Sir, uh, I, with respect, uh, I'm now talking about offering some information about the movement, not on the movement's behalf and not for the movement's benefit, but to the general public. Now, among this information, a substantial proportion of this information will be about the movement's philosophy. Yes. I shall make an earnest, and I think that, that is right. I shall right. make an earnest, and I think intelligent effort yes. to understand and then to communicate yes. the movement's philosophy. That is right. But I can assure you that it's also necessary to communicate something of the rather superficial yes. aspect of the movement, which I think I agree with you. Uh, much less important than philosophy, but it's also necessary to communicate this. Now, our uh, simple philosophy is that we are spirit soul. We are eternal. You are eternal. I am eternal. Everyone is eternal. We are changing our body, transmigrating from one body to another. And that means Reputation of Martha and Peter. But we are eternal. 
why you are in such degradation of reputation of birth and death. Not only that, sometimes in some species of life, many, very high position, sometimes uh, in low position, suppose uh, somebody is American, and the next slide, it becomes, if it becomes a tree, if it becomes a dog, eh? he may become a demigod also, then what will it be? Just then, in future, you may be a very big journalist, very big, our uh, resultant matter, but it may not be also. So, there is a big science in it, and people are not very really good Understand this move thoroughly, and take it seriously. It's for good, doctor. Very good, doctor. Now, in Europe, America, here also, so many frustrated young boys are coming uh, to be practically of low value in the country. In America, I see thousands of hippies, they're doing nothing. So what is the future of the country? In the flowers of the country, the young boys, they do not take interest in anything, in administration, in industry. Then what is the future? <coughs> From the economic point of view, I was telling that uh, America, for um, want of sufficient worker, they are importing goods. From Japan. And this is not very um, good sign. Why? Such a big country, American country, why this would import? But they are obliged to import. They have no worker. Japan's 75 percent business is done in America. We are not impractical because there are so many workers, but there is, oh, they refuse. And Central Park is a full of rubbish thing. Or you go, it is garbage. Why? There is no one come. <laughs> On the other side, we see so many young men, they are not working. It's simply idling time. So, they do not tackle the real problem. The future is not very hopeful. You think, go on like this. So many young boys, they are doing nothing. What is the percentage of hippies now in America? A very good person. All the school colleges. Here also in the university, all the universities. They, they are not hippies. So what do, what do we expect? They, they are taking education. And then after taking education, they don't do anything. This is a problem. Hmm. And so many illicit children, uh, the government has to supply them food. And uh, the welfare, what is that? That welfare department? Uh, Social. Social. Social service. Social. Social welfare. Social security. Oh. Welfare. Security. Plus social welfare. Hmm. That the girls are getting illicit children and the government has to supply food for them. Mm -hmm. Nobody is taking care of the girls, of the children. The government has to take. The responsibility is increasing. So many things. But this question of the movement will solve all the questions. It is such a nice moment. It is a boon. So you study from that point and view and present. You are a journalist, therefore I am talking so many things. This is good material for your writing. Practical. Mm -hmm. So when somebody joins your movement, uh -huh. uh, when somebody joins your movement, when they first come to see your movement, what presents itself to them are uh, men with shaven heads and saffron colored robes who dance in the street and who sing songs. Strange, the, the, the strange man, songs. But the, 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 these, are, these are strange uh, aspects. Hmm. And in themselves, they're not especially significant to an understanding of the philosophy, are they? No. This is, this dancing and dancing is for mass of people. But when you want to discuss philosophy, you have got volumes of books. Yes. yes. Both things we have got. We are attracting both the intelligent class of men and the mass of people. I mean, the children. Now, sir, I think you agree that when, uh, if, if you agree that this is the first thing that people generally see of your movement, yeah. uh, then surely if I'm to write a book in which I'm to describe 
the movement. It's necessary for me to but describe he some of the... Actually, everyone wants to see. So, he should see our books also, magazines also. Why does he not see? We our send our buyers in the state with books. If you are not liking this saffron dress and dancing, why don't you read the books? No, I, I don't think you, you, you take my point. Uh, the, what I'm saying is that let us imagine that the reader who picks up the book, this book that I'm going to write, I hope, uh, is very much like a person who sees the dev devotees dancing in the street because he's seeing something for the first time. Mm -hmm. Now, it's necessary, surely, to describe these ex external and superficial features. It is not superficial. It's, uh, this well, sure. dancing is a spiritual ecstasy. Otherwise, it is not a dog's dance. Mm. <laughs> you see, any gentleman, if I ask you, please dance on this footpath, will you agree? So, surely it is not that yeah. dancing. You don't compare with that dancing. It is not dog's dance. They chant, they feel. The dance. Yes. That is another thing. You try to understand it. Hmm. If they are coming from a respectable family, uh, now here, here is a boy, he's a professor. So if I ask him, please go and dance on the footpath, will he agree? A professor will agree. But when a professor dances, there is something you should understand. But, sir, I'm not saying that the dancing is meaningless. I'm saying that when one's if one sees people dancing, oh, yeah. that doesn't mean anything. That's no, you, that does not mean to you. That's what I mean. But it right. means to them. Yes. No, I'm not saying that it's meaningless. I'm saying that it appears to be meaningless in the same way that one should wonder why he has his head shaven and why he wears those clothes. If one doesn't understand, these things are... Uh, at least I can tell a shaving head means um, it clean, clean scent. The head is not overburden. It's unnecessary. <laughs> we want clear brain. And that is the system, Vedic system, all learned scholars, they clean say. Clean say. Yeah. Yes. And at least we get relief. Uh, a little uh, hair growing is also burden sound. It's clean. So it is personal convenience. Uh, so that is not the point of the No, but, uh, but uh, sir, I see. I I don't. I I see. It would be very difficult to explain the meaning of having a bald head. Mm. Uh, and by saying somebody's got a bald head, the reason for this is the emphasis on cleanliness and so on. Uh, and to explain why people wear clothes like this, it's impossible, surely, to explain explain, 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 explain the reasons these things without like describing them in the first place. Any way. any group of men. They have got a particular type of dress, mm. the military dress, the police dress. So people can understand that here is the police. Similarly, by this dress, they will chant, Hare Krishna, image. That is our experience. As soon as they will see these people, Hare Krishna, at least they will criticize our anything. They so want that people see us and chant Hare Krishna. That is what we want. Simply by seeing us, they'll remember Hare Krishna. That is great and Mahasut. Indirectly, that is our propaganda. Chanting Hare Krishna. Can I appeal to Mahanandar Das just for a second? Mm -hmm. um, what, what I'm trying to say in here is that um, for every person, well, for most of the people who read this book, uh, what they're going to be reading about is something which is completely alien. And therefore, one can't start by offering them a highly sophisticated discussion of the philosophy because they won't even begin to understand it. Just as when you people sell back the Godhead on the footpaths, the people who buy it, I can assure you, understand very little of it. And I think you're, you're aware that they understand very little of it. Uh, but they understand some of it and probably enough to make it worthwhile. You think so, and I think so too. But this book can't start off at the end. Can't it? I can't start off with 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 the philosophy. Can I? No, the question. Yeah. What they 
I must start off from the beginning for the person who reads the book. And the beginning for the person who reads the book is, here are these people wearing these strange clothes and doing these strange things. Now, why? Now, that's what I got to do in the book. And in order to do this, it's necessary to describe some of these physical characteristics. And my reason for doing this is, in order to define what is relevant, it's necessary also to define what is irrelevant. That's but a logic. Proper wants that you should have the highest understanding. Well, I'm just looking at it from their point of view, but if you present it from our point of view, then they can gain the realest and greatest understanding. Well, uh, with respect, I think that can only we can only we can only consider that question in in practice when I actually write material. Mm-hmm. You know, to no, no, no. Well, okay. I say, oh, what? Why mm-hmm. there is objection if they are dressed in a particular way? Oh, I'm not objecting to it at all. Then, I, in fact, it's one of the most one of the most reasons why I'm st- most strongly in favor of the so Hare Krishna. They are Hare Krishna people. They dress in a particular way. That is the answer. That's all. I don't mind, sir. I don't mind how they dress. I don't mind how anybody dresses. Uh, it's. It, I don't mind at all. I happen to dress conservatively. Other people dress less conservatively, and you people dress in saffron robes. There's not a. So why does it be a about the dress and thing there? No, I. For, for most for most people. One thing I think I understand is that. He's saying that many people come and become interested in our movement mm-hmm. by seeing us or by not understanding anything of what we're doing, but by visual, by the mundane, mm-hmm. seemingly, mm-hmm. Uh, aspects. Mm-hmm. And in his book, I think what he's saying is he wants to present it in a way that will attract that sort of person, whereas most people will not pick up the book and read it because it's a book on Krishna conscious philosophy, but because they're interested in the outward aspects of things. If it contains that to some degree, then they will pick it up and then he can present both and give them some knowledge also of what we're doing in our philosophy. Like, I do not follow. Like putting a label poison, uh, a label a nectar, label nectar on a bottle of poison. Uh, mm. <laughs> <laughs> they, will, they will take, they will, they will, they will think he is giving, uh, is giving them what what they are interested in, even though it may be superficial, but once there, then he can present the philosophy as, as well. I, I think I think that's what we're saying. Yes, well, I'm not trying to, uh, because I am not an adherent of, uh, I'm not a Hare Krishna movement member, as is obvious, uh, and because I am not a member of the movement, I'm therefore not trying to do precisely what uh, you gentlemen are saying. I'm not trying to package an un- unwholesome product like poison. <laughs> well, I appreciate it. But what I'm trying to do is to describe what is. Now, this requires an ex- exercise of the imagination. If you imagine somebody is outside, as each of you people were at one stage, you came to understand what, was, what this movement was by a gradual process. Now, I, in, I have a, a book of about 100 pages, I'm going to trace that process. Not in the way you did it, but in a slightly different way. But the things that strike one immediately uh, are these external and superficial, superficial characteristics. And then one becomes to appreciate rather more important things. And it's just a question of stating these in that way. Now, in order to understand the highest possible thing, it's surely necessary to state the superficial things as well, the less important things. This just seems to me to be... The um, all part of speaking tonight is very important and it might appear that he's not understanding but he's actually speaking to you like he said not your sharing coat so that if you can assimilate everything that Prabhupada is saying tonight you'll be able to write the book much more clearly you might think that he's not understanding but he's speaking the most important part I'm not suggesting he's understanding I think he's he's worried about my understanding which is why he's saying that's why right yeah well I appreciate this but I'm trying to convince him that I am that I am going to try to say accurately what your philosophy is, and then this I'll have to rely on your help because yeah, I couldn't possibly do it otherwise. No, 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 no. Oh, sorry, not explain, describe. Yes, yes. the rather better word. So but that, I, that philosophy, if you want to know more, then we can speak more. But that is the 
outlines of macular lobe that people without knowledge of his uh, identification they're missed there, being missed there. And that is very risky. Risky means that you have got this opportunity of understanding your position and get out of the difficulties of birth, death, old age and disease. If you do not properly use this opportunity, and again you become cats and dogs, then you are in a bit left. The present civilization is misleading. They consult with a few years enjoyment, so polymer. Suppose you are Australian or American. You have got very nice status in your country, a good house, good facility, and good money, and that's all that. But after your death, when you have to quit this certain uh, atmosphere, then after your death, what is happening to you? You are not concerned to you know. If you are eternal, if you are eternal, then suppose you have got this certain code, but it is torn up, but it is uh, old enough. You have to give it up. Then you have to pursue another certain code. So, uh, are you not prepared for that? What kind of certain code I should have? No, I'm not. Huh? No, I'm not. You are not? That, uh, that, that, that is a uh, very uh, good intelligence. You go naked? No, yes. it's, it's not very wise, provided one assumes that one is going to have a lot. Everyone thinks like that. Suppose I have to purchase yeah. one more. I consult my pocket, what kind of shirt I shall purchase. Everyone knows. But if you say uh, you are not interested, that is different here. But any man who is going to purchase, a new shirt and coat, he considers before going to the uh, tailor's house what kind of shirt he will have, what kind of coat, everyone thinks. That is natural. You cannot deny it. Whether it is suitable, whether it will be comfortable, uh, so many things, everyone wants this. And then he goes to a storehouse and order, give me this kind of coat, this kind of shirt. Why you can't say that nobody is interested in that? Everyone is there. No, I didn't say nobody was. Huh? I didn't say that nobody was. Uh, that is the natural income. So if you are eternal, if your life is not for this 10, 20 or 100 years, you are going to have another span of life. I am not interested to know what kind of life you are going to get. Well, I don't believe that I shall, but then uh-huh. I don't think that... It is not a question of belief, it is a fact. Right. You have to accept another body after this body. Just like you have already accepted. Your childhood body was there, and then it's gone. You accepted another body. Similarly, now you have got another body. A few years after, you get another body. So you are accepting body one after another. That's a fact. So you have to accept another body after this. So what kind of body I'm going to get? Is it not the point of consideration? But there is no education on this point. But that's a fact. We have accepted already so many bodies. A natural conclusion is then I must accept another body. But what kind of body? Now, you can see that there are four, eight million, four hundred thousand forms of body. So these questions are not discussed at all. But they are very important factors. That is phenomenal. But modern civilization they neglect. I don't mind what kind of body I shall get next level. Uh, so uh, the, those who are intelligent, uh, they, if they think that why shall I neglect this fire? I'm not going to accept a body like a tree or a dog. If I accept a body, I must have a body very like. One may not uh, mm, interested in this fire, but others may be interested. So if others are interested, why this chance should be denied? Is it going for? Yeah. The temple is calling on the phone. They want to know if you're coming tonight. No. No, it is too late. Yeah. That's why there is a study in science and so many departments of knowledge. It is not that mass of people is interested in PhD degree. 
But if one is interested in PhD degree, that's what government provides. Yes, in the university, come. And that is the uh, real facility. So if, if anyone is interested to understand Krishna consciousness, why it should be denied? Why it should be obstructed? Because I do not like it. In big, big university, maybe in higher studies, there may be one student, and for that one student, they are maintaining four professors. Each professor is paid two thousand dollars. Is it not a fact? What do you think, you professor? Is it not a fact? Some department of knowledge is maintained, even it is not paid. Is it not? Mm-hmm. There is so many departments simply for its heart's work. Because the government knows it is an important thing. It may not be for the mass of people, but at least one in two intelligent class of men, if they qualify, let them have this opportunity. So this is like that. Krishna consciousness is a moment, it's not for ordinary men, but it is a very important moment. Those who are interested, why they should be denied? It should be maintained. We cannot expect everyone can give up all this uh, bad habits, illicit sex, illicit meditating or drink or intoxication and gambling. That is not expected. But if one wants to do it for her status of life, why is it with that? This is not a bad thing. Why the city fathers are thinking that this should be strong? So, my appeal to you. That you are journalist, you are at least study this our moment and present very right. That's my request. Well, thank you very much for your yeah, Thank you.